Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Now, you know that I usually try to have all of you guys, my special friends from Kettering Church out there, give us a welcome. But we actually had some people ask for one of our special little friends to give a welcome today, so we're going to do that. But I also wanted to give you a reminder that if any of you would like to do the welcome or the craft or an object lesson, usually I have all of those things that I can just share with you that you can take a video of and, and share back with us and we'll even edit for you. So if you'd ever like to do that, please let me know. We'd love to help out. And here is one of our little friends, as you requested, welcoming you to Sabbath School. Hi boys and girls, welcome to Sabbath School. I wanted to say I'm thankful for each and every one of you. I want to say a special shout out to my friend, Dano. Hi, enjoy the rest of Sabbath School. Hello, my name is Joe Montez and this is my daughter, Cora. You've probably seen her around SVA and probably not church because we don't go to church anymore, do we? But I want to tell you a story or share something with you about how sometimes sin can be very, very sneaky in our lives. So sometimes when we, when we first start to disobey God, we do it really, really in a small way, such a small way that it really doesn't seem like much. So. Cora, take that string off. Well, that was easy. So some people say, I can stop sinning anytime I want. But then we keep doing naughty things, things that we know God doesn't like. And then sin gets in our life just a little bit more. Cora, take that off. So, uh-oh, uh-oh, you can do it. So you can still do it, but wow, it is really, really hard to get it off. And then eventually, as we get older, or as we continue to just let sin in our lives, and we don't ask God to help us, and we continue to do the same things over and over, things that we know God doesn't like, or we continue to do sneaky things that we know our parents don't like, and we continue to do those same things, eventually, sin becomes so hard in our lives it becomes such a big part of who we are that we can't get it out of our lives. Cora, try to get that out. And it becomes very difficult and there's nothing we can do about it. But Jesus then, if we ask Jesus to come help us, he sends the Holy Spirit. And it's like scissors coming into our lives, helping us become better and better and better. And eventually, he can free us from our sins and we are free again because of God's love and his help for us so this week as you go about doing what you do remember don't have sin in your life eventually it'll be really hard to get out and the only thing that can help us is Jesus happy have a happy Sabbath, Sabbath. bye happy Sabbath. hi my name is Violet Bay and I'm Noah Benny today we will be making Gratitude pumpkins. What will you be needing is some scissors, a black marker, tape if you need, if you want to, a stapler, and you will also need construction paper, green and orange. The first step is you will trace out your hand on the green construction paper. And then you will write, I am thankful for. The second step is you will cut out strips of orange paper. And, the, and then you will write what you're thankful for on the strips of paper. After you have 
wrote in all the things that you are thankful for, you put them on top of each other like this. But you flip them over upside down. Keep them a little close. And then when you do that, you take them in the middle. And then you flip it over. And take that side. the top and there's your gratitude pumpkin pumpkin happy, happy sabbath. sabbath happy sabbath again boys and girls let's pray as we start dear heavenly father um please be with us through this sabbath school help us to learn about you help us to worship you help us to lift you up and to fall more in love with you be with us through sabbath school in thy name amen okay so I've been thinking a lot about, about Thanksgiving, everything that it means. We had a great Thanksgiving. It wasn't our normal Thanksgiving. We didn't have all the family in. In fact, it was just us, but it was perfect. I think it's because I am most thankful for my family. I love when we all get together. We have a lot of fun. We spend a lot of time laughing at our Thanksgiving dinner. I love that. I believe God really blessed us. Coming back to people. We're, we're here in our country where we have a freedom of religion. We can worship God. We can have a Thanksgiving dinner. We can pray. We can do all those things. And, and it's amazing. And if you go back in history and you look at this, we were just studying this, this school year. And, you know, the, the, the pilgrims, they came here to get religious freedom. I mean, that's what it was all about is they wanted religious freedom. And they, they weren't getting it where they were, and they moved, and they moved, and they moved, and it seemed like they were being persecuted wherever they were. There was no good starts for them. And they decided to start over again in a new country, and they came to America, and they got here. And then you think about Thanksgiving and how it fits into it. That first year, in fact, I read one of the historians wrote, the first year, right around Thanksgiving time, they were so short on food. They were so short on food that they had rationed everybody down to four kernels of corn a day. That was their meal, four kernels. I mean, that's not even a handful of food. And then the next year, the next season, they learned how to plant and harvest with the help of the Indians, and they grew a great harvest, and food was something that they had. And they were so thankful that they took a day to worship God and praise him. Actually, the funny thing about it is they, a lot of people say that a lot of them took the time and fasted to pray, to use the time that they would have eaten to pray to God. But we turned it into eating food. And I'll tell you what, if you think about them having four kernels of food, we had a giant table of all kinds of food. It was amazing. We didn't have all of our family, but we seemed to have all the food. And food is what's interesting because it directly ties into our lesson today. If you had looked in 1 Corinthians 8, Paul was talking about there, he was specifically talking to people who were having conflicts over food. Isn't this crazy? So you had some of the Christians at this time believed it was okay to buy and to eat leftover food that had been given to altars, um, given to idols, altars, given to, to idols, 
that had been we said the, this food is for the idols the idols didn't eat it now we can get rid of it it had been blessed by the idols or whatever they would say they believed it didn't matter they don't believe in the idols they believed in god they could eat the food that had been given to idols they were okay with it but then you had another group and they were more prideful because they wanted to abstain from anything that might not look right so they ate nothing that looked like it was out of christian alignment they wouldn't eat food that was around an idol they wouldn't eat, eat anything like that so they here you had one group that would eat that the other group that would eat anything that would eat that wouldn't eat any of it they said no we don't want it we're we are going to be perfect holy followers of god we're going to we're going to create additional rules to make sure we're serving we're following god and then you still had others and they were saying they don't care they'll eat anything they'll do anything because god has already forgiven them it's already taken care of there's nothing there to worry about and you had these three groups that were fighting amongst each other all through all of this all of these these christians that believed together that were from the same church in essence the same family all of them started to become super unkind to each other have you ever had somebody be unkind to you have you ever been unkind to somebody you know what the bible tells us about that in first john three fifteen, it says if anyone if anyone hates his brother he's a murderer all these christians that were being unkind i don't think that they were murderers and i know that i've been mad at somebody before but i wouldn't have murdered them but that's what it says it says a lot of this hatred this anger this 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 unkindness comes out of conflict in fact we often call it a selfish conflict a selfish conflict is a conflict that happens and we hold on to it we refuse to let it go so if somebody did us wrong what we're going to do is we're going to remember it we're not going to let them live it down we're going to harbor it we're going to hold it against them we're going to have conflict against them that's not what we want to do no in fact this is kind of what started happening in the bible what we find out was when you start holding this selfish conflict it starts to destroy relationships it starts to destroy friendships. It even starts to destroy families. Conflict is no good. So the problem is, is that they were so caught up in selfish conflict that they have had lost sight of unity. And in unity, when we can come together and love and share and talk about God, we begin to show God's love. It grows in this group of people and it begins to spread to others outside of there. Soon you have other people coming to see what this special thing is that you have in the unity that you have. So selfish conflict, the best way that we need to handle conflict is we need to forgive. We need to forgive it and forget it. We need to say, I felt there was a conflict, it's over. I'm going to let it go. And we need to get back to, to loving our friends, to sharing Christ. We need to put Christ in our lives because the actual opposite of the conflict is when we love each other, we care about each other, and we show God to each other. And when you get that, we start to spread the good news about God. Because when it gets in our heart and we're talking about God, we're sharing God, we're loving people in God, we can't help but let it grow. Even we don't want to. We end up smiling when we shouldn't be smiling. We think about people when we shouldn't be, when we think about how we can love people. We see a neighbor struggling, raking up their, their leaves, and we go, we end up helping them out. We do these things because we love God. We want to show who he is, and God's love starts to come out of our lives, and we start to share Jesus. So if you have a conflict like they did in the Bible, just let it go. We don't need it. Let it go. Forgive it. Get over it. And let's work on sharing God's love. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, man, we want to share you with everybody. We don't want to have conflicts or weird feelings or, or dislike anybody around us. We want to love people more and more. Dear Heavenly Father, 
help us to have these great experiences with each other, to love people around us. Help us to most of all show who you are every day. We love you, dear Father, and in thy name, amen. Boys and girls, have a great Sabbath. We'll see you next week. Bye.